Good Sunday morning, everybody. Come on in. It's time to get Sunday dinner going. Hope you all are having a God bless Sunday so far. It's Sunday afternoon. I'm getting ready to start my dinner. Okay, today on the menu, we're going to have a meatloaf, but it's going to be made with Wagyu gourmet beef. And I'm going to add one pound of ground turkey. So it's going to be a Wagyu beef gourmet burger meatloaf with some added uh, turkey meat. So it's going to be three pounds of meat and that meatloaf all together. And as you can see, I got Brussels sprouts, my potatoes, and peppers and onions to season my meatloaf with. And there they are, y'all. I found them. They got them back in. This is some rutabagas. Okay, at the Piggly Wiggly here, they cut them up in pieces. So then you only have to peel um, peel that off of them, which is good for me because it hurts my hands to try to cut the whole um, thing at one time. So I've also got, I've already started peeling them. So I got to get going with this. So we have, we're going to have Brussels sprouts with potatoes, that Wagyu meatloaf, some rutabagas, and some... You know, I got to do my chicken. Got to have some chicken. Going to do some chicken. Going to do some lemon pepper. Spicy, sweet, spicy chicken. That's what Kareem asked for. So I'm going to uh, whip up that particular flavor for the chicken. I'm going to do it half and half. You just leave over half just uh, regular lemon pepper. And I'll add, make the sweet and spicy for him. He always likes stuff sweet and spicy. So here we go, y'all. This is everything that I'm going to need to make this dinner with. And when y'all see it again, it's going to be ready to sit down and eat. Except I'll come back in and show you as I prepare each one of these entrees. So y'all go ahead and get your stuff started. As you can see, I've just got mine out. So you got time to catch up with me. I will be right back. Pray as you go. And we'll see you in a few. Okay, I'm back, y'all. I've got my rutabagas over on the other side. I, of course, I peeled, clean peeled, and went ahead and cooked them because they take a little bit of time to cook. So now I'm going to start on this Wagyu meatloaf. Okay, I told you I'm going to put, I've got so far, this is two pounds of that uh, gourmet Wagyu uh, ground beef. And I you know, I think I've had Wagyu beef before, but it's a very expensive cut of meat. Um... And it comes from special Kobe cows, which originated, I'm told, in J uh, in Japan. And it comes from a special breed of cattle. And what makes it so uh, different or so significant is that it is a, it has marble fat in it, which makes it nice and tender and just succulent and supposedly makes the best burgers and the best meatloaf in the world. So what I'm going to do is make my meatloaf today. And you think about the fat, and I'm told that the fat that's in this particular cut of uh, meat that's ground into this ground beef is that it's the type of fat that is a good fat. So I can go with that. So we just got, I don't know, maybe you have or have not had the Wagyu, but what I'm going to do, basically the, the recipe is not all that different because I looked at it to see if anything in particular. The only thing that I saw that was different, uh, I think it was milk. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something else for milk. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this meatloaf. And I'm going to let y'all know what it uh, tastes like. Now, y'all know I'm going to always variate mine. I only had two pounds of that Wagyu beef, which was like those little packs. They're about $15 a pound. So somebody gave it to me and uh, wanted me to cook it. So here I am. I'm doing a meatloaf with it. We were going to do burgers, but then I thought, well, let's do burgers for Sunday dinner. So here we are, and I've got one pound of ground turkey in here. Ground turkey works with everything. And even in the recipes that I was reading, they use ground pork or ground whatever. You know, chef show us, y'all. So I'm going to get all my <coughs> meat all mixed up here together. And what I'm mixing now is the two pounds of ground beef and then the one pound of ground turkey. And all I'm doing is like what you would normally do uh, when you're mixing your... Um, meatloaf is you got to get all the meat you know mashed together so get all mashed up um i've uh, put a 
large or one large onion, one medium green pepper, and about four stalks of celery. I went ahead and put it in my food processor and got it chopped up nice and fine to put into the meatloaf, like I normally do. And my seasonings, <clears throat> excuse me, for this meatloaf is uh, right here. I've got a tablespoon each of onion powder, garlic powder, Italian seasoning, and a one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of black pepper, and one tablespoon of a complete seasoning. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all of, I'm gonna sprinkle all that goodness in there, okay? Okay, there we go. Let's get the rest of that out of there. And this is three pounds of meat now, so if you want a smaller meatloaf, then you just adjust it back. You know, just use half the ingredients. Or when you, you know, because I always sample, uh, cook a little piece of my uh, meatloaf meat before I actually cook it, make sure I got all the seasons that I need to have in it, okay? And the next thing I'm going to do, if I don't throw it all over the floor, and get that. I'm gonna beat up. I'm just gonna use one egg in here. Just one egg. I wanted to whip it up, just beat it up just a little bit. So that one egg. And go ahead and clean that off right quick. Get a little sanitizer going on in there. Okay. Get that. Put my little Clorox down there. A little bit of that spilled on the counter. I'll get that. There we go. Got to sanitize right off of there. Okay. So we're just going to continue to mix. I'm going to get me some gloves. I'm going to get my hands in here in a few minutes. But I want to get this all going. Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and put in my ground. One large onion, one medium green pepper, and three stalks of celery. I'm going to go ahead and drop that in. Okay. You have to have a lot of it now because y'all see it's going to be a pretty good sized meatloaf. Okay, I'll get that bowl out of the way. Get that going in here. Y'all know it's going to be good. This smells good and it's not even cooked yet, y'all. <laughs> so I know what this is going to taste like. And plus, we got that special ground meat in there too, y'all. Come on now. Come on, y'all. Come on, bear witness with me. Now, I'm gonna beat that egg up a little bit more. And this one egg is just to help it to gel together because I'm gonna put uh, about a cup and a half of bread crumbs in here, okay? I had some bread and what I had to do was I went ahead and put it in my food processor and ground it up. So I'm gonna drop them bread crumbs in there for this amount, about a cup and a half. And we're done with that. Let's get that out of the way so we can let the meatloaf mixture take center stage here. Okay. Wipe that off. Now, I'm going to bake this in a big old, my big old red baking dish. This is going to be pretty good size. Okay, let's do this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get my rubber gloves and we're going to get this mixed in together really, 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 really good. Um, okay, so I hope y'all got something on your stove getting ready for Sunday dinner. You know, it's a beautiful day here. This fall weather, I'm loving it. It cools off. I don't have to turn my um, heater on, except this morning. It got kind of cool. In fact, I'm going to get ready to open my back door right now before I get these gloves on. Okay, get my hands cleaned up. Okay, now, what I'm going to do, um, get that off of there. I'm going to go ahead and grab my pan while I'm at it, too. This is going to be a pretty good size meatloaf. Y'all will see when I get it into the pan. So, okay. Ready. 
Well, I always spray my pan. Spray. Or whatever kind of spray you have. And before I um, do that to them, I've got some truffle oil. And I'm going to dare to put me a little bit of this truffle oil in there. Just because I like truffle oil. Okay, now, I don't, and I'm going to put me a little bit of olive oil in there. Because, you know, I got the ground turkey in there. You know, ground turkey is kind of dry. And I always put a little oil in my ground turkey. And I don't know how it's going to react in there. But just to make sure that it does what it needs to do. Because I added ground turkey. Now, if you're using ground beef, you don't have to do the extra oil. Except that you just want that flavor. So I'm going to get my hands in here. Hmm. It's still a little bit frozen a little bit. But that's okay. We're going to get it all mixed up. Everything incorporated together. Okay. Okay. I'll pinch me a little piece off here and get it into the uh, microwave right quick. Okay. That's gonna be good. I can, ooh, can smell those herbs in there. You know, um, we were talking the other day about food. You know, you can buy even like this wagyu of a good steak. If you don't season it properly and cook it right, honey, keep your money in your pocket. You know, cooking is, is one of those things that uh, you have to focus on. You know, and, and part of the cookbook that I'll eventually that I, I will eventually write. I talk about how you have to not only see food and touch it, you have to, see, it has to be a, a, it's a sensory thing for me. So you have to see it, smell it, touch it, you use all five senses uh, when you're cooking, at least I do. use all five of my senses. And sometimes when I'm cooking something and I'm seasoning, if it doesn't, if my, yeah, I can get that little flutter feeling in my stomach or in my chest, that means something you left out, you didn't mix it up right something is not right so we're gonna make sure just like these bread crumbs in here even though i ground them up i gotta make sure that they're all in here evenly they're evenly distributed throughout so you don't bite down a pocket of bread crumbs or a pocket of egg or whatever you just have to take your time and mix it all in to all your ingredients have a consistency of, and the consistency here is it all looks the same, so therefore everything is mixed in. And of course, you know, when you get, somebody says it's, you cook something and Lord have mercy, ain't enough salt in it's too much salt. And if you put too much salt, it, it's a little bit more of a challenge, but you can fix it just like you can uh, when there's not enough salt in there. So, you know, you got, you got to find a way to fix it. Let me grab a paper towel and I'm going to go ahead and Y'all know I got the paper towel because I got something else along with it. I'm just what I need to do is just have something to grab with. I need to grab with the paper towel so I don't have to change my gloves. So I'm gonna stick this, that little piece into the microwave right quick. And the reason I do that, I want to make sure that my food is seasoned. Because the one thing about this meatloaf, once you cook it and got it all gelled up together, there's nothing you can really do if it's too salty. Then that means you're going to have to grind up some more, get some more meat to put in there to, to get it, you know, thinned out. Get that salt taste out of it. Or if it's not salty enough, you need to put some more salt in it because you don't want to cut into it and all that good old meat and they don't have any taste to it. So salt doesn't add all the taste, but it, it's a, a significant part of the taste. And I, I used, um, what do you call it, the Himalayan pink salt is what I use uh, to season with when I use salt. 
Either, either one, either that or sea salt. Okay. So we're letting that go ahead. Let me see. It's probably ready. Ready, I want to kill it. Didn't want to kill it. Well, I'm gonna cook all the taste out of it. Let me get me a fork here and just taste a little piece of it. Mm. Yes, sub uh, buddy. It's perfect. So those measurements that I gave you, perfect for three pounds of uh oh Jesus, that's good. Mm. That beef is wonderful. It is wonderful. I see why it costs so much. Mmm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Mmm, mmm. Yeah. Mmm. I like that. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Wow. Mmm. I love it. I'm gonna put me a little bit more, about another couple of tablespoons of olive oil in there. Oh, that's good, y'all. Yes, sir, uh, buddy. That's good. So, I'm going to get it ready to go into my baking dish. And y'all know what I used to do. I just get it out about like this. And just roll it on over into that baking dish. Okay, here we go. Get the baking dish on board. Yeah, there it is. Perfect. We're just going to lay it right in there. My mixing bowl out of the way. Now this is a perfect size because it, I'll have room to have some, a uh, little bit of uh, tomato gravy going around it. And be assured that this is not going to shrivel and shrink up real bad, okay? So we're going to put this in the oven. What I use, I put it at 375 for about a good hour because it's a pretty good size meatloaf y'all and uh what i'll do is i'll i'll place a piece of foil over it i won't wrap it tight i'll just place some foil over it so it won't dry out while it's cooking it'll maintain some of this moisture so that is the wagyu or what i say wagyu waggy you <coughs> meatloaf ready to go to the oven 375 degrees so hopefully you listen to that recipe there it is y'all beautiful 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 so hang tight and the next entree is going to be my chicken i got to make up a sauce for that for kareem okay y'all i got that chicken ready to go and that's my lemon pepper spice sweet and spicy is how kareem wants his so I'll, I'll make up some kind of sauce but there it is it's ready to go in the oven at uh well the meatloaf is already in so it's going right in there with the meatloaf at 375 so Hang the tight and we'll be back. Okay, y'all, I am back. My rutabagas, as I, I told y'all earlier, they're done. And what I'm getting ready, I peeled them, boiled them until they got soft enough to just you know, sort of mash them up like you do on mashed potatoes, but not, you know, they don't have to get quite that done because you're going to cook them a little bit more here shortly. So sort of mash them like that. If you got a nice masher, Cheryl, using my masher. Get ready to use my tongs. Thank you again. As you can hear over here on frying on the side, I got some turkey bacon frying in a pot. That's the pot that I'm going to be putting everything in. And so all I'm going to do is mash, get them mashed up good. When I get them mashed up, they're going to go over to this pot. I'm going to pour a little bit of juice that was on the rutabagas on top of them and let them probably cook for another maybe 20 more minutes. And I'll put some brown sugar and some black pepper in them, and we'll be ready to go. So hang tight, and I'll be right back. Okay, I got my rutabagas chopped up. So they're sort of chunky and lumpy, like you don't know, want them smooth and creamy. At least I don't do mine smooth and creamy. So they like that. So I'm gonna go ahead now and put them into the pan where I've got my bacon. Look, and I did put some olive oil in there because um, you know turkey bacon doesn't put off any kind of oil. So we're just gonna put them in there and let them finish cooking like this first. And we'll add a little bit of the, I kept some of the water from the rutabagas when I boiled them so that I can let them simmer for about uh, 
about another 30 minutes and they should be okay. If not, you know, just simmer them a little bit longer. These are so good. I don't know if you've had these. I grew up on these. Very, very easy to cook. They're hard to peel now because it's a hard, hard outside on root of it. That's why I'm so excited that I can get them from Piggy Wiggly already cut up and then I just take the little bit of skin off of each piece. Okay, so just make sure you get them all mixed in. Like so, put your fork with a cup of uh, brown sugar, or if you don't have brown sugar, whatever sugar you have, then go ahead and pour some um, out. Pour a little bit of that water. That's the water I saved off of, from cooking the root of Now you saw those two big packs I had. They shriveled down, y'all. So but this is a, a real, real good dish. It tastes good with a little bacon grease. But no, we used pork bacon back when I was coming up. But this, this uh, turkey bacon is just fine. So let them, I'm going to cover them in a few minutes and let them cook for about 30 minutes. When you see them again, they'll be ready to eat, so hang tight. Okay, y'all, I'm back. These are my Brussels sprouts, my sauteed Brussels sprouts with onions. Um, and I put onion powder, garlic powder. I'm cooking them in olive oil. And I'm, when they get just about done, I'm going to add some potatoes. I got my potatoes. Y'all know I told you I always do my potatoes in the oven, microwaving. For about five minutes, it was kind of soft, and then I add the potatoes to my Brussels sprout. So that's my uh, little potato and Brussels sprout side dish. So that's one of my sides. The other side is going to be rice, and of course, uh, the rutabagas are in the pot, and they're cooking nicely. So, let's see. Here we go. Rutabagas are cooking nicely. So rutabagas, potatoes, and uh, Brussels sprouts. And I got a pot over in the back of the stove there for some rice. So we'll be back shortly. Okay, y'all. This meal is pretty much ready. I got the chicken ready to go. I went ahead and made just a little bit of, uh, of it's called, we're going to call it lemon pepper sweet and sour sauce. Okay, because Kareem had asked me. So it sort of gave me an idea. I'm not going to put a lot of, of that sweet and sour on here. Just enough to put it in the oven give it a little bit of a different taste and as i was saying earlier this is some these pieces right here this is some leftover chicken y'all know me and my leftovers i just heat them up brown them up threw them right on the pan with the rest of it and so we got us some so thanks to kareem this is a, a new way to do chicken y'all just a new way to do chicken so it's called lemon pepper honey mustard with brown sugar chicken it's about the best I can come up with. And so, of course, I tell you that, that Wagyu, let me see, Wagyu beef, that is the best beef I've put in my mouth in a long time. I've had that beef before, but I had just forgotten about it. But it is some kind of good, y'all. I used the broth off of that meat and cooked my rice with it. It was so good. I'm telling you, so treat yourself. Try some of that Wagyu um, chicken. I'm sorry, Wagyu beef. It is wonderful. It is phenomenal. So everything is ready. Uh, the meatloaf, I just made just a little bit of the sauce to go on. Not a lot because that meat is so good. Um, you don't want to, I, I don't want to cover it, the flavor up. But you know, meatloaf, you got to have some kind of little sauce on it. So it's got to be in the oven for a little while for it to sort of cook on top. And that's about all I'm, that's about all I'm going to put. The rest of the sauce, I cooked it in the microwave. So if anybody wants extra sauce over their rice, which they probably won't need because I cooked the rice in that broth, this is some kind of good ground beef, y'all. I'm sure it's wonderful. So everything is ready. Y'all keep those prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down. Pray without ceasing. Whoops. Where that's trying to go to. Okay, let's get the top off. That's the rice back there. That rice is pretty much done. That's the uh, rutabagas. That is my chicken. And back there is my Brussels sprouts with potatoes. And that Wagyu. I don't have to. Because I want to call it Wagyu. Wagyu meatloaf. And it's going to be wonderful, y'all. 
Honey, I can imagine the sandwich I'm going to eat off of that tomorrow. It's one of those kind of meals you think is so good. I probably ought to just put that in the refrigerator and don't put it out on the stove for uh, dinner today. But I'm going to put it out anyway, y'all. So listen, guys, thank y'all for stopping by. Keep those prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down. Please continue to pray without ceasing and do something kind for someone. Stand in the gap, y'all, for somebody because the world is hurting. And that is what we are called to do in these days. So until I decide to cook again, y'all, it got hot in the kitchen today, child. It wasn't too cool outside today. It got hot in here today. So I'm getting ready to get out of here. So love you guys until I decide to cook again now. Pray without ceasing. Keep those prayers going up. Toodles.